Welcome to another Tech Insight video where we show you how to make your workspace work. In this episode, we're going to focus on the Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktop Service to show you how this environment is set up and configured. From the user perspective, accessing the environment is going to be very similar to using a Virtual Apps and Desktop deployment done completely on-prem. Users are going to enter the URL into their browser or launch Workspace app, log in, and with this instance, we'll be able to have a time-based one-time password token associated with the environment. And then the user is going to see a list of their resources that they're going to be able to access just like they normally would. However, the difference here is really on the admin side. Architecturally speaking, what we end up having is a cloud-hosted environment as well as an on-prem environment. In our cloud environment, we have the virtual apps and desktop service, we have the workspace experience, and then the gateway service. In the on-prem data center, we implement cloud connectors that create secure outbound connections to those cloud services. From there, the cloud connector is able to allow the cloud services to create and manage your on-prem virtual desktops. They could be Windows published applications, Windows desktops, or Linux apps and desktops as well. Once that environment is set up, a user who can be external or internal will make a connection to the workspace experience and select the appropriate application or desktop they want to access. Once they select that, uh, Workspace will create this connection between the user as well as the virtual desktop via the gateway service. So it'll be able to secure that communication across public network links. Let's now take a look to see how we set up this entire environment. The first thing we need to do is connect to Citrix Cloud via the cloud.com URL and log in as our uh, administrative account. Now this account is going to be associated with certain services and for this example we've subscribed to the virtual apps and desktop service as well as the gateway service. Now because this is a new environment we have to set up our resource locations because right now they're empty. A resource location is going to correspond to a on-prem data center or different cloud environments. With the Cloud Connector software downloaded I can now install it onto my redundant Cloud Connector server. So these are just Windows 2016 servers and I'm going to go ahead and install uh, the Cloud Connector software. It's a very simple install where you essentially will log into the same account you use to log into cloud.com because this is your administrative account that has certain services associated with it. And once you authenticate, you're going to make sure that you're selecting the correct environment. Uh, and the admin can have multiple environments, and so we want to make sure these connectors are associated with the appropriate environment. Once that's complete, the Cloud Connector is going to go ahead and finish the installation and then test the connectivity, making sure that it's able to contact the cloud subscription and to associate itself with the appropriate services that have been associated with that particular account. Now, if you remember from the architecture diagram, the importance of the Cloud Connector is it's going to create that secure outbound connection to allow those cloud services to be able to talk to on-prem components. With the connector set up and installed, we can go ahead and verify that they've been associated with our particular resource location for this cloud account. We also want to make some basic configuration changes to customize this environment for our particular deployment. The first thing is to just verify that the domain for our on-prem environment is associated with this account, that it has been associated via the cloud connectors. We also want to enable different authentication options for our environment. So in this case, we're going to enable a time-based one-time password to provide multi-factor authentication. In the workspace configuration, we want to set up a unique URL. Uh, instead of using the random alphanumeric characters that have been associated with it, we want to use something that's more specific to our organization and easier for our users to remember. We also want to uh, force the multi-factor authentication. So before we just enabled this capability for the overall environment, now we want to set it up so that when a user tries to log on to the workspace environment, they will have to sign in via Active Directory as well as a, as a token that resets every 30 seconds. 
And finally, we want to make sure that the appropriate services are enabled for this environment. So in this case, we want to make sure the gateway service is enabled so users can have that secure remote access to our on-prem virtual desktops and virtual apps. With our environment set up, it's now time to configure our master image that we'll be able to associate and publish from our virtual apps and desktop service. So I have an image built that includes the Windows operating system, all of my, my corporate policies, you know, corporate configurations, as well as the applications that this user is going to need uh, embedded within this master image. To install the virtual delivery agent, the VDA, uh, we go ahead and utilize the, the ISO file that was downloaded from Citrix.com and it'll auto run. And we essentially are just going to accept a lot of the default configurations because for most cases, this is going to be uh, good enough for our user environment. We do have to specify the delivery controllers uh, that are going to be responsible for this particular uh, virtual delivery agent. In this instance, it's just going to be those cloud connectors that we set up initially that's going to communicate with our cloud hosted environment. So once that has been set up and configured, we go ahead and hit install and the VDA will go and install, install the components, set itself up and make that communication out to the cloud hosted environment. Now we sped this up a little bit because uh, it does take a couple of minutes, um, but you can see the overall installation of this aspect is extremely easy and very straightforward. With a master image built within our on-prem hypervisor, we can now utilize the virtual apps and desktop service running in Citrus Cloud to create multiple non-persistent virtual machines and deliver those out to our, our user environment. So within the cloud environment, we go ahead and get into the manage environment. And the first thing we have to do is actually configure this for our on-prem environment. So all this communication is going to happen across that secure channel via the cloud connector, but we have to tell the cloud service how to interact with the underlying hypervisor within our data center. So the first thing we're going to do is create that hosting connection. And in this instance, we're using the Citrix hypervisor, so we give it the, the URL for the master server, as well as the credentials that will allow it to uh, authenticate uh, to the Citrix hypervisor. Once that connection's made, we then determine what type of storage do we want to use for this environment. Do we want to use shared storage or do we want to use local storage and any different optimizations that might be incorporated with that. The final aspect is making sure the network is set up appropriately as well as determining whether you want to use a virtual GPU or not. So in this case, I'm not. And we'll go ahead and complete the configuration for that hosting infrastructure. With the hosting infrastructure configured, we can now go ahead and create a machine catalog that's associated with that master image that we created earlier. So that master image is going to be the basis for uh, all of the uh, virtual desktops that we're going to be creating um, and they'll be non-persistent for our user environment. One of the items that we're going to actually associate with this particular virtual desktop is a memory cache. This RAM based write cache allows us to offload our IOPS from the local storage and using a small section of the virtual machines RAM. So this is going to give an overall better performance for our virtual machines so we aren't waiting for the subsystem to respond to these random writes required by the operating system and the applications. Now as we continue along this process of creating a new machine catalog, what you saw is we're defining the, the naming parameters for the different virtual machines that we're going to create where in Active Directory are these machines going to be created, and then we provide the credentials to allow this cloud service to be able to interact with Active Directory to create these new computer accounts in the appropriate OU structure. Once that's done, we go ahead and provide a name for this machine catalog that allows us to reference it later uh, and to be able to identify from other machine catalogs that we have within the environment. Now, 
once we start this, what ha what's happening here is Machine Creation Service is, is taking that master image that we have. It's creating a copy, a read-only copy that all of these different virtual machines, these non-persistent virtual machines, will use. Now, because it's a read-only copy, uh, anytime these virtual machines reboot, all the changes that a user has made that aren't stored, aren't captured via the, the, the profile manager tool that we have integrated within the virtual object desktop environment, all those changes get destroyed. And then when a user connects to this desktop the next time, it's a brand new clean desktop environment. With the machine catalog created, we now have a set of virtual desktops available within the environment. We need to associate those virtual desktops with a delivery group. And the delivery group says what users have access to these particular resources. So in this case, because we're doing a Windows 10 published desktop, we're only looking at giving the users access to that desktop. But we could have also gone down uh, the route of providing published applications. So instead of giving them a whole desktop interface, we could have narrowed it down to just a particular application. The last part is to go back to our cloud environment, look in our library at the different resources that we now have created and that are available for our users. In this case, we want to select the desktop and associate that to a particular user group with an Active Directory. So this will make it so that a user who is a member of that Active Directory, Active Directory group will be able to access this particular resource, an application or a desktop uh, within their workspace environment. It is impressive if you think about what we just accomplished. We created an entirely new Citrix virtual apps and desktops environment in less than 20 minutes. This included redundant infrastructure components, non-persistent desktops, and user assignments. We can easily expand this environment to include additional desktops, published applications, and new on-prem or cloud-hosted resource locations.